My name is Tom Woodford. I'm the college counselor with Hilliard City Schools. Today we are going to talk about 10th grade college planning. Um, I know that uh, some of you might be thinking, why are we speaking about this so early? Um, it's really not that early. This, the, this is a good time during this sophomore year um, that we get started on having these types of conversations, creating a testing plan and starting to visit. We're going to go all we're going to go over all of those kind of things here and all of those topics. And so um, if you have any questions when this is finished, feel free to um, email me and I would love to schedule a time to to meet with you. So every year I get asked a lot of questions, a lot of questions about OSU. And I think it's important because we have a lot of folks who have gone to OSU and um, today the application process in the um, um, enrollment at OSU is very different than it is today than it was back in our day. So let's just talk briefly. Um, last year, Ohio State had over 80,000 applications for main campus. They brought in their largest freshman class of 9,000 students. The average SAT is between a 1340 and a 1480, and the average ACT is a 29.9, with the middle 50% being a 28 to a 32. Um, of the students that got in last year, 51% of those students um, applied with test scores. Uh, but if you look at the 80,000 students that had applied, only 40% of them had test scores. We will talk more about that um, in a few minutes, but I just want to give you that quick little overview of one of the more popular schools that our students and parents talk to me about every year. So where do our kids go to school every year? Every year, our kids in um, Hilliard schools um, go to pretty much all of the Big Ten schools. Um, I was really pleased last spring we had four students get admitted and choose to um, go to um, Ivy League schools. We have kids that go to Ivy League like schools like Washington University in St. Louis, Stanford, Georgetown, Vanderbilt, MIT, and, and Duke and many, many others. Um, our graduates every year go to almost all of the public schools and private schools throughout the um, state of Ohio. And um, every once in a while, we have students that choose to go overseas as well. So I think it's important too that we look at our data. Um, in 2019, I did some research and uh, since 2013 through 2019, 2020, 74 percent of our students went off to college which is which is an outstanding number and over the last two years though we have seen a slight dip um, the last two years it's down to 67 percent and that's typical across the state of ohio as well as all over the u.s what i am very proud of when i look at our students that choose to go to school is a 91% of those students return for their second year. Uh, parents, I know that um, many of your kids have spoken to you about wanting to go out of state. Um, allow them to have those chats with you, allow them the opportunity to visit those schools. But typically on average, 89% of our students go to school in state. So um, continue to speak with them. Um, I do think it's important that we also understand even a deeper dive into our data. Um, over the last um, 10 to 12 years or so, the students that choose to go to college, as we've said, a large number of our kids um, um, transition into their second year very smoothly. But when I look at our students from Hilliard City Schools that graduate from college, in six years, it's between 50 and 60%. Again, that, that's actually above the average of kids from all over the state of Ohio, as well as 
all over the country, but it is something that we need to be aware of. And so we as parents, as we are talking to our kids about moving on to college, making sure that this is the right step for them, um, making sure that they're choosing the right college, the right major, and choosing a place that is going to be home for them. And looking at the five most popular schools that our students choose to go to, um, Columbus State, Ohio State, Ohio University, Bowling Green, OSU, Newark are uh, in the top five. So looking at um, ACT and SAT, that is still a thing, even though we hear a lot of students talk about test optional, and we will talk more about that. But like I mentioned with OSU, only 40% of the students that applied last year had test scores, uh, but over half of the students that got admitted had those test scores. So that tells me that even a place like Ohio State values test scores. Both ACT and SAT are um, offered seven times a year. And so students have opportunities to be able to do that. Um, students can take either one of these tests. Uh, the ACT is made up of English, reading, um, science, and math with the highest composite score of a 36. The SAT is made up of reading and writing. That is one half of the test. And then the other half is mathematics. Each section's worth 800 points with the highest composite is a 1600. The ACT students can take digitally as well as paper pencil. And on the SAT, they can only take it digitally right now. So in school, um, this past October, our juniors all took the PSAT 10. That's the 10th grade version of the PSAT scores. Uh, they should have their scores by now. Students can log into their college board account and uh, find their scores on the PSAT. The PSAT is out of 1520. There was, there was no cost for your student to take that test. Next fall, during their, the, in October of their junior year, uh, students have an opportunity to take the PSAT. Now the PSAT as a junior is the test that is used for the National Merit Scholarship Program. And so every year um, we hear about students that are National Merit Scholars. I'm very excited. We have 16 of them this year for Hilliard City Schools. Eight of them are semifinalists. Uh, we're very, very excited about that. And to become a National Merit Scholar, it's based on the test score uh, during your junior year. That will be in October. Um, and so advertising for that will go out next fall, early in September. Uh, so students can sign up for that. There is a $25 fee. All juniors will also take the SAT during the school day. That is something that is paid for by Hilliard City Schools, uh, students do not need to sign up for that either. Hilliard will take care of that. You will hear more about that during their junior year. So uh, what should students be doing as they plan ahead? Um, it is important that they finish this junior, this sophomore year um, with a strong GPA. Um, colleges are going to look at their cumulative GPA when they finish their junior year the grade point average that is on the transcript is what will be used during the um, evaluation process. Um, colleges are going to want to see that students are beginning to volunteer and serve their um, areas and where they live. So that is something I encourage um, parents to um, advise students on right now. I would encourage your students to volunteer at one place or maybe two places over a long period of time, not at five or six different places. Um, please attend college meetings. We will have more meetings throughout the spring. Um, I would encourage you to come to those as well. When we get to scheduling in um, February, I encourage your students to look at taking more honors courses, AP courses, as well as college credits, um, college credit plus courses as well. Um, on December 3rd, 
I am hosting a College Credit Plus meeting. I encourage all of you to come and look at the many opportunities for, for sophomores to be able to earn college credits um, in high school. Um, every fall, we have over 100 college reps that come to Hilliard City Schools to um, meet with your students. Please take advantage of that. I'll be advertising a college fair in February. Um, I would encourage your students and you as parents to come to that um, event. We'll have over 300 colleges there that day. That is a national fair. It'll be held uh, downtown at the convention center. And then very soon here, I will begin to include college opportunities for high school students in my college and career news email that goes out each week. So it's important that we understand the terms when, um, as we go on visits, because college admissions folks are going to um, use their own jargon in this. You've heard your, your um, students talk about AP. The AP stands for Advanced Placement. Um, advanced Placement courses are the highest high school courses that we offer in that subject area. Students may be granted college credit based on their test scores, not by taking the class. Uh, students will take an AP exam during the first two full weeks of May. Every university has their own policy on granting credit for AP exams. College Credit Plus, that is a completely different animal. That is when students are taking college classes while in high school and they earn college credits for them. They also will earn high school credit for those as well. And so every university has their own policy on accepting transfer credits when it comes to students taking college courses while in high school. The SAT, the PSAT, and, and AP programs, uh, those are all governed by the college board. Um, so um, ACT is a separate company um, that, that manages ACT. Again, the, the PSAT, the students take during their junior year is the test that's used for the National Merit Scholarship Program. Um, when you hear colleges talk about super scoring, that is when um, students take the ACT or the SAT, you should always ask this question, do you super score those tests? And what that means is if a student takes the ACT three times and they score a 28, a 28, and a 27, a school like Ohio State who does not super score uh, they will um, assess your child by using their highest ACT, which is a 28. A school like Dayton or Miami, who super scores, they might assess your child as having a 29 or a 30 on the ACT because they will take the highest reading test from um, the ACT, the highest math, science, and English across multiple tests and use the highest subscores of each and that will create a new composite for them. So if a school will super score, it is important to send all of your standardized tests to that school. And then test optional, which we will talk more about, is if a student takes the ACT and SAT and the test scores do not match the type of student that they are, then those colleges will allow them to apply without using tests. And then test blind, um, the public schools in the state of California are test blind, which means they are legislatively not allowed to use test scores in the um, college assessment process. And so there are other colleges and universities across the country that are also test blind, but all of the public schools in the state of California are not allowed to use test scores. College visits, I would encourage uh, your sophomore children to begin to do this. This is something I feel that should be a, a family project. Um, students signing up for these, um, family and students going on these tours and visits uh, together. You wanna sign up by them by uh, going on a college's website, clicking on uh, schedule a visit. You will choose a date and a time to be able to do that. It's very important. That, that these visits go through the um, School of Admissions. 
and not just showing, showing up on a campus and walking around because those colleges do not know and cannot track any contact that they've had with your child. So financial aid, um, this is a very important piece. Uh, parents and students cannot begin to fill out the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid until October 1st of their senior year. And so it's important that parents do not begin to do that over the summer because you'll be filling out the wrong document. Um, and so the, the live document, the current document will go live on October 1st. A lot of private schools, uh, schools along the East Coast, will also use a second form to create a financial aid package for your child. And those schools use a CSS profile that document can be found on the College Board website. If a college is saying that this is needed, this is something that you have to do. The FAFSA is becoming a lot easier to fill out. You can complete it in about 40 minutes. The CSS profile is going to take some time and it will dive into the family assets, assets much deeper. Um, so major changes happened um, last year and this year to the FAFSA. This year's current seniors will begin to fill it out on December 1st. It was scheduled to go open on October 1st and it wasn't quite ready. It is in the beta testing phase right now. And so on December 1st, it will go live for current seniors as well. So if you look on at very various colleges and you look on their websites and you see the cost of attendance um, and some of those prices that might come out might be fairly alarming. Um, on every school's website, they have a thing called a net price calculator where you can put in some basic information and then it will give an estimate of what the true cost might be at that school. So I would encourage you to fill that out it only takes a few minutes. It'll give you and your child an, an estimate of what the true cost might be. The net price calculator cannot have another name and it must be within two clicks of the homepage. So what are colleges looking for? The colleges are gonna look at your child holistically. So no student is gonna be assessed compared to a different student. They're gonna look at your child's application transcript within the context of their own situation. Some colleges, all colleges are gonna use the GPA that is on the transcript. Some colleges might take that GPA and create a new GPA for them um, that they can use inside of their own system. So every student has a GPA that was is within the same um, um, context. They're going to look at volunteer. They're going to look at leadership. Has your child joined an organization outside of school? Have they joined any organizations or clubs inside of school? Demonstrated interest. Has your child visited campus? Have they, um, um, have they met with your child at different college fairs? Did they meet with your child when they came to Hilliard schools to visit? And also very important is the essay. The essay and any supplemental optional essays that are available, this allows those colleges to create a uh, true vision of your child. So what can your child do now? They can create a plan. They want to create a testing plan. They want to create an academic plan for the classes they're going to take as a junior and a senior. That plan should include joining clubs, volunteering, being active in sports, being um, having a job that is never frowned upon. Having a job is something that is very important as well. Uh, and also just being able to put all of these things into the application. Uh, making sure that students are taking a solid coursework, especially during that senior year. The majority of our students after their junior year have completed most academic requirements that are needed so they can graduate. Most seniors need an English, maybe a math, um, and that's it. So Hilliard offers a lot of opportunities through College Credit Plus, electives, 
different co-op and internship opportunities uh, to make senior year more active uh, for them. Uh, take advantage. I would encourage your child to take advantage of all of those opportunities. Now, there's multiple ways that your child can potentially um, earn college credits. We offer um, 17 AP courses across Hilliard City Schools. Um, we, what is important to understand about AP courses is that those are high school courses. Um, they are the highest high school courses in that subject area that we offer. Kids do not earn college credits for taking those classes. They will take an AP exam in May. Um, they will get a, they will earn a score between one and five. And then that's all they have. They just have that score. When they leave Hilliard and go off to college, that university will have its own policy on how they will grant credits for their own courses based on the scores of those tests. Students cannot pass the AP exam. They cannot fail the AP exam. They earn a score between one and five. And then uh, they take that score and they could potentially be, um, they could earn credits from that college based on those scores. To benefit our students and to encourage our students to take more challenging courses, we give weight to AP classes. And so if a student takes an AP course, they can get an extra point on their GPA. That's how you hear our students who we're on a four point scale, how they graduate with a 4.4, 4.5 GPA, because students have an opportunity to earn a five point A for taking AP courses as well as college credit plus courses. AP courses on a high school transcript looks very, very positive because those colleges know those are the highest um, high school courses we offer in those subject areas. And then there's also College Credit Plus. College Credit Plus is where students take college classes while in high school. Uh, we have over, we have around 900 students taking College Credit Plus courses this year with the majority of them taking courses through Kenyon College, Ohio State, as well as um, Columbus State. Uh, we also have students taking other classes at schools like Sinclair, um, Cincinnati, and so on and so forth. Kenyon College offers college courses inside of each of our three high schools. Um, it's different at each high school. We do offer English courses, physics courses, chemistry, as well as Spanish courses at, at those high schools. At Ohio State, um, students have to apply to the academy at OSU. Students can either take classes online or on campus. This year we have 24 students who are active on OSU's campus. Um, Columbus State, we have kids taking classes so many different ways. On campus, at their branch campuses, we have students taking classes online. And then we also have a, a partnership with Columbus State that we call College Jumpstart, where we have put together a package of college courses that are offered at the ILC and the hub. College instructors come to us, and we have students from all three high schools who are active in those courses during their junior and senior year. If your child is interested in taking part in College Jumpstart, um, when we schedule in February, they just need to sign up for College Jumpstart Year One Myself and Mr. Maggie will come and see them a few weeks later. We will assist them in filling out the intent form. We will assist them in uh, applying to Columbus State. And then we will make sure they have all forms filled in and turned in before spring break. And so students automatically qualify if they have an unweighted GPA of a 3.0 or higher. Um, referencing College Credit Plus, specifically College Jumpstart, again, next year as, as, as juniors, if they would sign up for this, they would take um, English 1100, English 2367, Psychology 1100, and Poli Sci, which would count as their uh, junior government credit. They will take these classes at the ILC and the hub. They'll be there for two periods a day. 
and then they will go back to their home schools to take the rest of their academic schedule. Um, if you need to speak to me, feel free to email me here. Next up is Trevor Maggie. He's going to talk to you about how uh, we use school links to assist our students in career searches, career surveys, as well as college search programming. Thanks, Tom. Uh, hi, everybody. Yes, my name is Trevor Maggie. I'm the school counselor on the Innovation Campus. Uh, I want to talk with you briefly about School Links. School Links is our career and college research platform. All students 7 through 12 have access to this platform and have been using it for a, for a number of years. What you see here are just a couple screenshots of what School Links has to offer. School Links um, allows you to research colleges and careers. This top screen kind of just shows uh, a college search. I'm sorry, a career search. You can search by specific careers, such as nursing, politician, welder, veterinarian, whatever you would like to search by, or you can search by career clusters. Um, once you identify something that you would like to research, you can go into all kinds of depth about that specific career, what education is needed, what the job openings are like, what the typical day is like, what skills are required, what the salary is. The college search below here allows you to research colleges, and you can do that broadly or specific, uh, however you would like. You could put in a specific college, such as the Ohio State University right here, or you can use these options at the top, um, campus, admissions, degree type, to kind of dial in and, and give you specific um, uh, types of colleges and specific characteristics of schools that you are looking for, and it will list for you those schools that match that search. It also has a VR option, so if you wanted to do just a virtual tour of that campus, many schools have that option as well. You can use each of these tools individually by themselves, or you can research a career and then dial down through that research and it will lead you directly to the colleges that have those programs. The other benefit of School Links are the uh, personality and career assessments. And if a student tells you they do not like School Links, these seven assessments are generally why. Um, what they do is they ask students certain questions and then give them results based on the answers those students um, selected. And students will often say, well, it told me I should be this and I should be that, and I don't want to do that. Um, again, this is just a computer. It is just giving you options to consider based on the characteristics, the answers, the traits that you identified in your selection. So I would urge you to um, talk with your students about this, help them start researching some different careers based on their own traits. This find your path survey, would you rather survey. Um, this third one over here is, is a top skills survey. These will each provide different types of results. Down here below is an example of my results from the would you rather survey. And it gives you top career clusters. So as I look through this and I'm going to reflect on my own past, does this match me? Hospitality and tourism. I'm someone who, before I was married and had kids, did quite a bit of travel. Okay, so that's reflected there. Human services, education and training, people. Okay, I work in a people business. Those are there. Business management and, and uh, administration. That doesn't necessarily apply, and that's okay. Down here, it says I'm realistic and I'm a doer, building and creating things. I can't create, I'm not a builder, but I do like to be active. I do like to be up and doing things, um, helping other people, going out on my own. Uh, I can't just sit around and, and watch TV and just sit and watch others do things. I want to be doing things. Secondly, it says I'm artistic. A lot of students will look at this and say, well, that means I'm a painter. I'm a drawer. I don't do that stuff. I would argue that's not necessarily how it can be read. Um, is, is a pediatrician artistic? Is a school counselor artistic? Um, what does that mean? For me, that just means 
are you able to use a creative solution to solve problems? How are you creative? Is a football coach artistic? I would argue he is, yes. So please um, encourage your students to jump into school links, explore it with them, talk with them through these results and see how it is reflected in their life because from these results, you can then take these and go back to this career search, this college search, and make the, those things align so that they are on the right path. Thank you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to myself or Mr. Maggie. We would love to help you. Thank you.